Hi, my name is Dr. Laura Santuri, and I'm the Vice Chair of the Board of Directors for the Interstitial Cystitis Association, and I'm also a faculty member in the College of Health Sciences at the University of Indianapolis. I'm also a researcher, and about a year ago, as part of September's IC Awareness Month, I was interviewed by a fellow board member, Nicole Cozine, about the preliminary results of a study that I had recently conducted. Today, I want to give you just a brief teaser for a webinar that I'm actually going to be conducting in November as part of Bladder Health Month, where I'll present the full results of that study. That study was called the IC Hope Study, and the purpose of this study was to explore the experience of people living with IC, but with a specific focus on people who were doing relatively well. Um, I saw a bit of a gap in the literature and what we know about this condition. There's an awful lot of studies that document how challenging and how difficult this condition can be and all of the different impacts that it can have on our quality of life. But I, what I wasn't seeing in the literature is information about people who were coping well with the condition. So the intent of this study was to recruit people who scored relatively well on physical and mental health and talk to them about how they cope with IC. There were a variety of things that came out of this study. Um, there were a number of factors or things that were identified as uh, influencing how well someone copes with a condition. Some of these were internal, so things like our own attitudes, our beliefs, our values, our emotions. Some of these were external, our access to healthcare or our experiences with our, with our healthcare providers uh, or the relationships that we have with other people. Much of this makes coping with IC much like coping with many other chronic conditions, and I think there are things that we can learn from that. But there are some things that are unique about living with IC that I think probably we all know. Um, a couple of the things that came out that I thought were really interesting had to do with social support and also being an active self-manager of this condition. One of the things that I thought was interesting about social support was that it really wasn't about how much of it you had or about who was engaged, but it was more about people having a, having a support system of people who actually understand what it's like to live with this condition um, and, and also having a positive support system because even when you have people in your life who understand, if it's um, if the perspective that's shared is negative, that can actually work to our detriment. In addition, when it comes to being an active self-manager, I think one of the things that makes living with this condition unique is that people um, living with IC have to take a pretty high amount of personal responsibility for management of this condition. It's not to say that there aren't effective medical treatments provided by healthcare providers, but a lot of the things that people were using or engaging in as coping strategies were things that didn't come from a healthcare provider. And so a lot of personal responsibility there for the patient and that there is a cost sometimes beyond financial to some of those self-management strategies. So my plan in the, web, uh, the webinar in November is to expand on these results, uh, provide a bit more detail, and also talk about some key takeaways. Of course, you wanna be careful about making mass generalizations based on one study, but I do think there are some key takeaways here for both people living with IC and the people who care for them. So I hope that you will join me in November.